In this video, I'm going to show you how you can take two materials, mix them together and add a mask so you can reveal detail across your object. Just before I start, I wanted to let you know that I'm using Blender 4.2 on a Windows operating system with an NVIDIA graphics card and the Cycles render engine. OK, let's dig in. I've got my scene already set up and if you need a tutorial on how to do that, you can find it also on this channel. I will leave a link to that video uh, above this screen or at the top of the screen, sorry. I'm in the shading tab and I have the um, display render preview enabled on viewport shading. I am using the cycles render engine and I'm on my graphics processing unit for computing all of that stuff. So with our object selected, I will click new. Now this is going to give us our first texture with the material output so we can see what's happening on screen. But I'm going to need to mix these in the future. So I'm going to start by adding a mix shader. That's here, shader, mix shader. And I'll move it over that connecting line so it turns white and then click. And that will automatically connect it up. Now it's currently um, mixing between this material and nothing. But we will come on to that shortly. I'm going to start by setting up my first material. So for the first material, I want the material that's going to be on top, which is going into the top slot in the mix shader. So that's going to be this goldy color. So I'm going to start by trying to get that roughly there. So there's the hue, saturation and value um, numbers for you. 0 0.093, 0 0.882 and 0 0.800. That will give me this kind of basic goldy color. I'm then going to decrease the roughness so it's super smooth and then increase the metallic value to 1. Everything else here I will leave the same. So that is the first material. Now I'm going to drag that off to the side and then I'm going to click on this second shader input, drag off this little line, release it, and then I'll search for another principled BSDF node. And that's going to give me my second material that this is going to mix with. Now for this one, I'm going to use this kind of dark grey colour. So let's go for... Um, Let's go for a value of 0.125 and it will be 0 on hue and 0 on saturation. Now you can tell already that it's mixing the two together kind of evenly between the two. We'll need to sort that out in a minute. Now for the uh, roughness, I'm going to crank that all the way up to 1. And leave all these other values the same. I am going to come back and do something with the metallic value in a minute, but for now I shall leave that. Because what I want to do is actually sort out how these are going to mix together. Now at the moment, obviously you've got one material on top of the other, and they're basically just mixing between the two. But what I'd like to use this is this mixing value or factor to create a mask. The first thing that I'm going to do is drag this off. I'm going to work backwards, so I'm going to, no I'm not, I'm actually going to start by getting a noise factor. I'll just drop it there. Uh, and I'm going to set, in fact everything, I'm going to leave everything uh, as it is. I'm going to press Control T while I've got that selected to add a texture coordinate and a mapping node. You can search for those manually though if you need to. And I'm going to put the top texture coordinate as object. Now you can already sort of just about make out that it's starting to make it a little bit patchy and that's according to this noise texture. Now I want a bit more control of that 
So I'm going to add a colour ramp in between the noise texture and the mix shader. And I'm going to set this uh, interpolation mode to constant. And I'm going to drag this white value and just watch what happens to the monkey head. It will start revealing patches. So if I do that there, 0 0.509, that gives us basically a mask. So the noise texture as standard looks like this, but with this constant value it's either going to be black or white, no grey values. So if I isolate that colour ramp, you'll see there what's happening. So the black values are going to be this top material, which is our metallic gold, and the white values will be our bottom material, which is that kind of rough grey. Easy enough. What I would like to do though is add a little bit more detail to this. So I'm just going to bring that in a bit closer you can see so so that you can see better. And I'm going to go down to my metallic and I'm going to add a bump node. Plug the normal from that into the normal of the metallic. I'm going to drag this group of things over here because I want to use the colour output from this colour ramp to go into the height of the bump. Essentially what I'm doing is basically creating a raised edge wherever the black hits the white of that colour ramp. Now I am going to invert that and you can just about make out now that there is kind of a, an illusion of a raised edge around that detail. I'm going to drop the strength down to 0.5 and I'll leave the distance at 1. Now if I isolate this you'll be able to see better. So wherever the black edges are hitting the white edges that's creating this bump detail and that's translating over to our main material which is then obviously going through the mix shader. Now to get a little tiny bit more realism what I'm going to do for the uh, second material which is sitting underneath that gold plating is add a layer weight node and that's going to plug into or sorry the facing value from that is going to plug into the metallic value here. So it's giving a slight edge to it, or a slight rounding. It's not very visible and it's not necessary for the mixing of the two materials, it's just something that I liked the look of. Anyway, let's just reorganize this a little bit so that we can see everything. Anyway, that's a very simple and basic way of mixing two materials together in Blender. There are other ways that we can use um, that I will show you in separate videos in the future, but I hope that's helped you for now. If you have enjoyed this, please remember to give it a thumbs up and of course subscribe for notifications of future content. And in the meantime, thanks for watching.